In this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at the asset browser. Now, I realize that's not the most exciting thing, but if you haven't looked in a while, there are plenty of pre-made materials, models, assets, textures, capsules, all of which can save us a bunch of time, maybe even money. So definitely worth taking a look at this stuff and being aware of it. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're gonna take a look at the asset browser. And I believe in order to access these assets, you need to have a subscription to Maxon One. Um, so it, I'm not the biggest fan of subs subscriptions in general, but I do think it's nice when you get more out of it. And as they are adding more things to this all the time, it's not necessarily uh, a bad thing. Um, but here is how you can open the asset browser. It is organized into different categories. And some of these, like models, will have actual models. Others, um, it can be things like uh, motion capture stuff. So take kind of the, the categories here with a grain of salt, especially when you get into things like templates for the cameras where um, you know these are different camera movements, not necessarily different models though. I understand kind of where else would they put them, maybe scenes, presets, who knows. Um, but starting with kind of like appliances here, you'll see that um, you'll have a lot of options for things you can add um, to your projects. And what I've been pleasantly surprised with kind of clicking through these a bit ahead of time is how many of these are starting to be redshift assets as well so that I don't have to remake these materials. So it's kind of like a win-win. Great, I don't have to go online, try and find a blender. Awesome, it also has the redshift materials already made so I don't have to remake the materials using the texture maps that are in here or a model I find on online. Quite a few in the bathroom section as well that are Redshift. Now, typically these are all stored on the cloud, so you can download them. You can also favorite them, so they'll show up in your favorites here. Uh, but yeah, like I said, there's a lot of different um, types of models here for us to kind of look through find and take advantage of without having to go online and pay for something, make something from scratch, uh, or if nothing else, just kind of come in uh, and get started with these and then modify them to be exactly what we want. Uh, now, some of these you know, categories have a few more items than others, right? Um, the food has a decent amount and still, you know, it'd be nice if some of these were redshift though. I'm guessing some of these that don't are, are also procedural models as opposed to say a texture map. So I get where, um, you know, that may be a little bit trickier. They also have quite a few kit bash elements, um, different connectors, uh, decals. Oh, interesting. Okay, cool. Um, pieces, things like that. So that can be really cool and useful. Kitchen stuff anything from dinnerware to cutlery. I was expecting maybe more like uh, counters or cabinets or something like that, but hey, still useful. Um, landscapes, what do we have here? Different stones, different pieces of wood. So lots of cool things. And I'm not gonna go through every category here, but hopefully you're starting to get the idea. There's different presets for the sky, shelving. Maybe that's where we'd get some cabinets. Eh, not quite, but close enough. So yeah, lots of cool things to go through and look at. Um, when it comes to materials, there's also quite a few materials in here. It's probably worth switching our renderer over to Redshift for this, just so um, we can see if that makes a difference. Now, node materials, I wouldn't expect these to be Redshift, um, as there is a node editor for Cinema 4D's materials, but as we start getting into some of these other categories, um, I would expect to see them. And specifically when it comes to, Red okay, they showed up, um, Redshift, uh, you can always just search for Redshift and it will show you those types of assets, whether it's a material or I believe even um, a, an object or a model that has those. So yeah, there's different carpet material, ceramics, fabrics, all of these are Redshift. Um, and like I said, if you don't pay attention to kind of the announcements Maxon puts out, you don't update your Cinema 4D, although I think these just automatically get added if I'm not mistaken. Um, then uh, yeah, I mean, you're gonna be missing out on a lot of these types of things. Now in media is where you can find things like textures and HDRIs. Um, imperfections is one of my favorite categories here. So um, anything from scratches to fingerprints to smudges, all you know, right here. Um, some of these other ones, UV test, okay, movies. I'm not sure how useful these would be, but you can see um, that there are plenty of different textures in here. And I, I suspect these textures are, are the ones used 
in a lot of those materials. I have also found that when sculpting or even doing some, some body paint stuff, um, that some of the presets you have to find in here, um, as opposed to kind of in the sculpting layout when you try and add it through there or in body paint using kind of the brushes and presets there. So, um, you know, for instance, if I search for brushes um, and make sure I'm not in a specific mode, uh, we will start to see, hopefully, yeah, there we go, um, some of the body paint brush presets that, like I said, I wasn't able to find right away, so I came over here and searched for it and, you know, was able to kind of find them and use them. Um, now, the nodes section is not something I spend too much time in um, because I don't or haven't spent a lot of time working with the nodes kind of set up and getting com comfortable with that. So don't expect a video about that anytime soon. Um, but operators or um, actually not op operators, but the capsules uh, are what I think can also be very helpful. Now, trying to find those can be a bit tricky as, you know, despite the, the way they've organized this, um, you may not find them quite as easily as you may think. So I know there was like an extrude capsule or node. Here it is, node operator. Um, so maybe they are under the operators here, um, different capsules. But, uh, you know, one of the things I've I've seen and, and wanted to kind of make a video about, but it didn't justify its whole video, is a backdrop. So there's now a primitive kind of backdrop piece of geometry. So I can't tell you how many times I've created this from scratch. And it's really nice to have this built in here. Same with some of these other things, you know, the FUI graph um, can be really nice, right? And there's actually a whole preset scene with this. Um, so definitely kind of keeping out, keeping an eye out on these geometry primitives uh, can also be helpful, whether it's stairs or, I don't know, is that loading? What's loading there? Um, you know, some other elements that might be useful here. And I mentioned FUI, I kind of showed some of these um, or one of these in my last video, but there are quite a few example scenes. And so these can be a great thing to reverse engineer um, and see how they did it, right? So here's that FUI graph. Let's take a look at it. Um, now I've looked at this before, but it's essentially using um, that same type of setup here the FUI graph in a variety of different ways, a bunch of different options, and it's using the Redshift um, object tag to uh, help create geometry for it, from it, okay? And then materials on top as well. So um, lots of cool things to kind of take a look at, reverse engineer, and get a sense of how they're put together so that if you need to do something similar, you don't have to start from scratch here. That is extremely underwhelming and does not look like the picture. I don't know, ah, I bet post effects would help. There we go. And who knows, maybe that's something to do with what frame I'm on. Um, but yeah, definitely take a look at the object, the asset browser if you haven't. There's a lot going on. One of the things I haven't talked about, probably the last thing I do, is HDRIs. There are quite a few HDRIs in here. Now, I tried to disconnect my Grayscale Gorilla um, uh, hub in hopes that those assets assets wouldn't show up here because they do. Um, but so there's obviously going to be a lot more here than um, what uh, you would have if you don't have Grayscale Gorillas um, uh, plugin. But I promise you, if you do Google or not Google, but type in HDRI, you will see a lot of these. And honestly, it looks like these at the bottom here that have this download icon as opposed to that icon. These are all the ones um, that are included, right? So, you know, that's a lot of different HDRIs, different outdoor settings, indoor settings, a couple of studio ones. Um, so plenty of options to drop into a dome light or whatever renderer you are using. That will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please leave a comment down below. If you could do me a favor, like this video as well as subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, take care.